Hello and welcome to the webinar for creating iOS applications using C Sharp with Xamarin.iOS. You may have originally signed up when this was titled Creating iOS Applications Using C Sharp with Monotouch, uh, but Xamarin 2.0 was recently released and the product has been renamed Xamarin.iOS. Today I'm going to talk to you about using your existing C-sharp skills to build fully functional iPhone and iPad applications that run natively on the platform. Just a little bit of information on me. I, as it says, I'm a technical evangelist for Infragistics with a focus on mobile technologies. Uh, Brentschooly.com is where you can hit me for my website. Uh, that'll link you out to uh, my Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn and all of that stuff. Uh, my Infragistics blog is at bit.ly slash igbrent. Uh, this webinar will be posted there, uh, as well as many other blog posts. Uh, if you need to contact me via email, I'm at bschooly at infragistics.com. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Brent Schooley. But that's enough about me. What are we here to talk about today? Well, what is Xamarin.iOS and why might you want to use it? Uh, Xamarin.ios, obviously it's a solution from Xamarin that allows you to use C Sharp with their mono runtime to build native iOS applications that run on the iPad, the iPod Touch, the iPhone, and perhaps future devices down the line. Uh, mono. Mono is an open source cross-platform implementation of C Sharp and the CLR uh, that is binary compatible with .NET. Uh, it was originally created by a company called Zimian, uh, founded by uh, Miguel Diacaza and Nat Friedman. Uh, then it was sponsored by Novell, and now it's fully under uh, the direction of Xamarin. And we'll talk about sort of the history there in a moment. Uh, it runs on a variety of platforms, uh, all kinds of game consoles, different types of computer platforms. Uh, you name it, if there's a platform out there, Mono has probably been ported to run on it. Uh, the list is way too long to put on a slide, and no one really wants to read all that anyways. Uh, but what does it do? It brings the familiar familiarity of C-sharp development to platforms where other languages would otherwise be required. In particular, in this case, we're talking about iOS, so that's Objective-C. Um, We'll talk a little bit about Objective-C in a moment, but it's an unfamiliar language for a lot of people, and C-sharp being sort of the lingua franca of .NET, um, it's good to be able to use C-sharp on other platforms such as iOS. Let's talk a little bit about the history of Monotouch and now, of course, Xamarin.iOS. Uh, back in September of 2009, Monotouch was released. Uh, this was a new platform basically to allow C-sharp developers to build iOS apps. Uh, a lot of people were curious as to whether Apple was going to allow this though. Uh, and then in April of 2010, uh, Apple changed their terms of service. Basically after seven months of Apple pretty much allowing this sort of thing to go on, uh, they changed section 3.3.1 of their developer agreement uh, to disallow third-party tools and languages. So it looked like it was primarily aimed at Flash. Adobe was, was building the capabilities into Flash for Flash developers to create iOS applications, and Apple really doesn't want Flash on their platform, so this sort of looked like it was directly aimed at Adobe. But it, it kind of sideswept a lot of other platforms like Monotouch, uh, and again, everything was thrown into question. Uh, almost a year after Monotouch was released, uh, Apple changed its mind on 3.3.1 uh, to basically allow third-party tools and languages to create iOS applications as long as they don't download code. And nothing in Monotouch downloads code uh, to do its compilation, so it's perfectly fine again. Uh, so that's great. But in May of 2011, it's almost like the, the Mono team couldn't catch a break um, with this product. Uh, a rumor started to circulate that Attachmate, who had recently purchased Novell, had laid off the Mono team. And for about two weeks, everybody was unsure whether this was true or not uh, until Miguel Diacaza came out and said, yeah, it's true. 
Um, we formed a new company called Xamarin. Once again, he hooked up with Nat Friedman to start this company uh, and that they would be working on new tools uh, but they wouldn't be using the existing Monotouch code base because Novell still had the rights for that. Well, in July of 2011, Xamarin partnered with Attachmate and got a perpetual license for all things Mono. So this allowed them to immediately start selling uh, the existing Monotouch and Mono for Android, uh, which is great. Uh, it allowed people to have full support for the products that they already owned uh, while Xamarin was busy creating the things that were just released as Xamarin 2.0. In August of 2011, uh, Mono 2.10.3 was released, and there were also Mono Touch and Mono for Android uh, releases. So this was the first release for, uh, for Xamarin. And that brings us up to today, where Mono Touch is rebranded as Xamarin.iOS, We've got a brand new IDE called Xamarin Studio, and it's now also possible to create iOS apps using Visual Studio uh, as long as there's a Mac on the network for the build process, or if the Mac that's running Visual Studio uh, is inside of a virtual machine. So that's really cool, and we're gonna be talking about that a little bit uh, here in a bit, the Visual Studio support. So why might you want to use Xamarin.iOS? Well, this will give you cross-platform development, uh, so you can reuse your existing C-sharp libraries. Uh, and if you want to build uh, applications that run on iOS, Android, and Windows Phone, you're going to get to use a lot of your back-end code uh, when you move to those platforms. Uh, you'll just get to reuse it because you could use Mono for Android for Android, and uh, obviously Windows Phone has C-sharp support natively. You get to use a familiar IDE. So here I've listed MonoDevelop. That's now Xamarin Studio, uh, which has features similar to Visual Studio, but you've also got the option to use Visual Studio as the last bullet mentions uh, in Xamarin 2.0. Uh, Xamarin.iOS is constantly kept up to date for the latest version of iOS. So the team is almost in lockstep. So Apple has a very uh, long, well-documented beta process for each of its releases. Uh, the Xamarin team stays up to date with the beta, and when the final version of the iOS release comes out, within a day or two, uh, there's, a, there's a Xamarin release that goes with it. Usually, you've already got support for that when it comes out. And most importantly, you're gonna be building native iOS applications. So there are a lot of solutions that allow you to build applications for the platform, but you're really not building native applications in these. You're, you're putting together Flash or you're using HTML5 to build these applications. You're not working directly with the platform. Uh, Mono Touch, uh, the Xamarin.iOS, is going to allow you to work directly with the UI kit classes that are that are used to build native iOS applications. So that's probably the biggest benefit and why you might not want to use these other platforms. The big thing, of course, is getting to use C Sharp. You can't use C Sharp on those other those other pro products either. So what are you going to get with that? You get things like link. So this link statement is looping over a uh, person. Uh, table in a, in a SQLite database. You're going to get events that you're used to. So you've got a button object and you're hooking up the touch up inside uh, event that we'll look at later. And that looks familiar to you if you're a C-sharp developer. And you're going to get really good out-of-the-box XML support. Uh, working with XML in Objective-C without having a third-party library can be really painful. So having the access to the C-sharp ability to work with XML is great in this case. Here's a little look at some Objective-C versus C-sharp examples. Uh, so we're talking about attributed strings here. Uh, an attributed string is, is basically a string that has uh, a font. Uh, it might have sections that are bold. Maybe we're going to be able to specify the foreground color for the text uh, right on the string itself. So in Objective-C, the, the API to actually work with that is actually a C API. Uh, so I don't know how many people are 
comfortable with working directly with C like this, I suppose if you're a C-sharp developer, maybe not so much. Uh, the code on the left, uh, there's a lot of really long names, hard to deal with, um, you know, pointers to pointers and dereferencing. It, it's, a, it's a royal pain. Uh, if, you, if you look at the C-sharp code, it's very clean. Uh, the names are very easy to work with, and it's concise. So that's, that's one example. Uh, just one example of the, the difference between the two languages. Xamarin Studio, uh, this is the new IDE that comes along with Xamarin 2.0. Uh, it's built from the ground up to be a, a wonderfully uh, well-crafted tool for creating uh, your, your Xamarin applications. It has code completion, it's got this project navigator, uh, everything you might expect to have in an IDE such as Visual Studio is going to be available here in Xamarin Studio. Uh, if you're comfortable in Visual Studio, you will find some level of comfort here in Xamarin Studio. There's also, as I mentioned, Xamarin.iOS for Visual Studio. This is going to allow you to build iOS applications uh, right from the comfortable home of Visual Studio. Uh, you are still going to need a Mac uh, on the network for the build process. Uh, but you don't have to be coding directly on this Mac. You can, you can do this from a network machine. Uh, interface files are still going to require a Mac for editing. So there is not a uh, interface editor, uh, user interface editor in Visual Studio for iOS applications. Uh, that still uses Xcode, uh, which I will show you in a moment, uh, on the Mac. So you're still probably going to need access to the Mac in, in a lot of cases, but you can still get a lot of things done uh, from Visual Studio in terms of your backend code. And if you're coding your UI by hand uh, without using the interface builder files, uh, then you won't even need that Mac in this case either. Uh, one caveat, this does require the business license uh, for Xamarin.iOS, which is $999 a year. We'll take a look at the pricing in a moment. Here is that pricing, by the way. The, the most popular, uh, as indicated here, is the business platform, predominantly because it's going to get you that Visual Studio support, uh, as well as some email support from the team. Uh, but what's really interesting here is there is now a free starter edition uh, for people that are getting started with this platform. That's going to come with Xamarin Studio. Uh, you are going to be limited on the app size that you can build in this starter uh, package. Uh, 32 kilobytes of IL code uh, once your app's built. So you can really build a basic application here to kind of get a feel for it. If your application needs aren't huge uh, for this platform, you can actually uh, put an app on the store with this uh, free, this free edition, right? If it's a small enough application, you're gonna get the ability to run it on device and you're going to get the ability to post that to the store. If you need to build a larger application, uh, but you don't need the Visual Studio support or any of the business features that come with the business package, uh, there is an indie version of this that's $299 uh, per, per platform per year. The per platform means if you're building for uh, iOS and Android, you're going to need to pay $299 twice for that one for each platform. Uh, that's what that means on each of those uh, packages. Uh, again, if you want the Visual Studio support, probably your best bet uh, is that business package. However, if you're, you're inside of an enterprise, you might want to take advantage of the enterprise package. Uh, that comes with some higher level support, hot fixes. Um, they'll, they'll actually have a kickoff session with you and uh, you'll get some premium third-party components. I think it's about a $500 value. So there's some great stuff there if you are an enterprise and you need that uh, one business day support. So you've got a service level agreement with that. But that's enough of the uh, informational section of this. Let's get down into some code. So what we have here is uh, Xamarin Studio, as I mentioned before. Uh, there are some familiarities here for people who are used to Visual Studio. Uh, one thing that you'll see right away is in the center section there's Xamarin News. 
this is very similar to what Visual Studio has in terms of the updates that they provide from their RSS feed and, and those sorts of things. One nice thing that they've included in Xamarin Studio here are a bunch of pre-built applications. Uh, these are things that you can download and take a look at uh, sample-wise. So there's there's some things that use maps and and uh, kind of table views to sort of look through an employee directory. We'll, we'll take a look at this example uh, in a little bit. But what we're going to do uh, today is build a canonical Hello World iPhone application, basically. So what we can do here is create a, a new solution. Uh, just like you would in Visual Studio, we're going to create a solution. Uh, here we get uh, all kinds of platforms to work with. Uh, we're going to build for iOS. Um, so what we're going to do today is an iPhone application. And we're going to do what's called a, a single view application. Uh, what is a single view application? Well, this is just uh, a phone application that uses a single page for its view. There's not going to be any uh, navigation. We're not going to have any tabs or anything like that. We're just going to work with a single screen. Uh, if you're familiar with um, single page applications in the web world, it's kind of similar to that, I suppose. Uh, but we're, we're just not going to navigate, navigate away from this page. We're just going to have a simple uh, text label and a button that when we tap it, it's going to say hello. Uh, so let's name this. We're going to name it uh, Hello World uh, Webinar edition. Right? So that's going to go ahead and create a directory for the solution. This is all stuff that you're, you're probably familiar with from uh, Visual Studio. We click OK and it's going to create our solution for us. And we get a bunch of files to work with. Uh, first and foremost, the one that opens up right away is the app delegate. Uh, this is a subclass of something called UI application delegate. Uh, and this is the, the class that's responsible for um, launching our application uh, and, and getting everything up and running for us uh, and it's also going to receive all of the events from the system that might come in so if you your application gets into a situation where it's low memory uh, this app delegate is going to be the one that's sort of informed that that's going to happen or if the app is going to need to shut down or, or similar things like that uh, the app delegate is going to be responsible for that now you'll notice if you look at the solution, uh, the different classes that were built for us, we have this thing called a view controller. What is a view controller? Well, a view controller, uh, if you're familiar with the MVC world, so we have model objects, uh, which are the objects that represent the business data uh, for the application, uh, and we have views which tend to be the user interface objects uh, for the application. Uh, we also have controllers. Uh, so the controller is kind of the thing that coordinates the interaction uh, by the user in the interface. Uh, might load the model data to, to give the view access to it. Uh, in the iOS world, the controller objects tend to be what are called view controllers. Uh, and on the iPhone, a view controller, you can think of this as what represents a single screen worth of data. So for our application, since we have a single screen, we're going to have a single view controller. This is a little bit different on the iPad. On the iPad, you might compose one screen of multiple view controllers. So if you have things like popover controls, uh, the popover itself might have a view controller. But that's, we're not going to worry about the complexities of that for this, the purposes of this webinar. Uh, we're just going to be talking about the iPhone. So you can think of a view controller as representing a single screen uh, worth of data. So what happens in this code? Uh, when the application is loaded up and ready to go, this finished launching uh, event is going to get handled by our app delegate. It's going to grab the window for the main screen. Um, and then it's going to create an instance of our view controller, set, its, set the Windows root view controller, so the thing that's going to show up on screen uh, at the root level, to that instance of the view controller. And then it's going to make that window be what's visible. 
So and then it's going to return true out of here. So what that's all that's doing is creating our screen and adding it to the window and then showing itself. So what does our view controller look like? Well, you'll notice we've got two files here. We've got our C# -sharp code. You can think of this almost as the code behind for our view. Uh, and so what's going to happen here is when our view controller is loaded up, this view did load method will get called. Uh, and that's where we're going to stick the code that we customize our screen in. This XIB file that you'll notice here, this is actually an interface builder file. Uh, and, and when we double click that in a moment, it's going to launch Xcode. Xcode is the IDE for building iOS applications using Objective-C. That is Apple's tool. We use Xcode solely for the purpose of putting together our user interface if we want to use the interface builder. What's neat about Xamarin Studio is that when we double click this XIB file, Xamarin Studio is going to create an Objective-C project for a small Objective-C project for our uh, C Sharp solution. And it's going to pass it over to Xcode and open up the interface file. Then when we make changes in Xcode and come back to Xamarin Studio, Xamarin Studio is going to pick up the changes that we made in the Objective-C project and bring them into our C Sharp project. So let's let's see what that works or what that workflow looks like. So I'm going to I'm going to double click this XIB file. And you can see it's it's updating the Xcode project for our our webinar uh, Hello World webinar edition and it drops us inside of Xcode. Now is probably going to look really unfamiliar to you. So I'm going to help by hiding some things that don't matter. Uh, so in this view section here, we can hide this left bar. Uh, we don't necessarily need that right now. We're just going to focus solely on uh, working with this view right here. So what we see is that by default, our application has just a, a, an empty screen with a gray background. So I'm going to save this file and hop back over to Xamarin Studio. When I do so, we're going to get this synchronizing changes thing inside of Xamarin Studio. And what I want to prove out right now is that if I run this application, I expect to see a blank gray screen. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hit the play button over here uh, to run our application in the debugger. Uh, it's compiling the native code and then it's going to pop the iOS simulator and run our application. And lo and behold, uh, we have a nice big retina sized, uh, retina sized iPhone here. For the purposes of being able to see this a little better, I'm going to zoom out uh, here to about 75% just so we can see the whole thing at once. Uh, but there it is, blank gray screen. Um, as we saw in the interface builder. But let's let's take it one step further and, and go back and just really prove out to ourselves that the Xcode interaction really does work. So if I click on the view controller, if you look on this uh, inspector, what's called the inspector over here, in the attributes panel, there's a background. If I click on that, I get a little color pop up. And what I want to do is change the background color to this blue. Right. And if I save the file out, hop back over to Xamarin Studio, we get synchronized changes. And if I go ahead and run it again, we can really get proof that this is all working, that all this magic is working, because lo and behold, there is our blue background. So we get what we expect here. Uh, so we know that everything is, is hooked up and working correctly uh, between Xcode and Xamarin Studio with some degree of confidence. So let's come over here and actually build out uh, an interface. I'm going to set the background color uh, again to uh, something just off-white a little bit. And then we're going to pull up this library panel down here. And what you have in the library are a whole bunch of different uh, iOS controls that you can use. There's a lot of stuff here. Um, we're going to use some very basic controls today for this though. We're just going to create a label. 
Notice that you get these kind of indicator lines. Um, if you follow these indicator lines, you can be confident that your user interface is matching up to Apple's human interface guidelines document, uh, which if you're getting into iOS application building for the first time, I, I really recommend that you read through the human interface guidelines document for iOS applications. Uh, it's imperative that your iOS applications follow these design guidelines. Uh, you do not want to build an application that does not conform to those guidelines because there's a good chance that Apple might reject it. Uh, so what we're going to do today here, as I mentioned, is we're going to have a button. So we'll pull out this rounded rect button. Again, following the guidelines, we'll snap it into place. Resize it so it takes up the full width. Uh, we can double click on these to change the text. So I'm going to make the button say, uh, say hello. Right? And I'm going to blank out the text uh, for our label because uh, we don't want it to say anything when the application launches. That's the basics for the interface that we're going to build uh, here today. Uh, I'm going to save that out, hop back over to uh, Xamarin Studio, synchronize the changes up, run the application just to verify that everything looks okay uh, in our application. We can tap the button. doesn't do anything right now because we haven't actually hooked it up uh, to the code at all. Let's go ahead and do that though. So if you're familiar with interface builders in general, one of the things that you might be used to doing is uh, having some code generated for you uh, for these different things. So in Visual Studio you might have double clicked on a button and it would generate the event for you. The workflow is a little bit different here, um, but you'll find some familiarity uh, anyways. What we can do here is kind of hide this panel. We don't need it anymore. I'm going to switch the editor to this assistant editor. Now what this gives me is a side-by-side -side view of my interface file and our view controller that we've been working with and looking at over in Xamarin Studio. In Xcode, we're actually looking at the Objective-C version, a bare-bones version of the header file for our Hello World Webinar Edition view controller. If you pay attention to the warning at the top, as I mentioned before, this is automatically generated by Xamarin Studio uh, to mirror the C -sharp types that were in our solution. Changes uh, in this file um, from the UI designer are going to get synchronized back to C -sharp. Uh, but if you make manual changes, they might not transfer over correctly. Basically what that's saying is do the basics in this file, uh, but don't hand edit it. It's, it's very much like the designer files that you might be used to uh, if, you, if you did Windows Forms programming. Uh, you didn't want to edit that designer file because it's going to get auto-generated again. If we come back to this interface file later, the changes that you made by hand might get wiped out. Uh, so basically all we want to do here is hook up our interface uh, to this file. How do we do that? Well, if you have an object in here, such as our label, and you hold down the control key and you drag from that element over to this code file, notice that we get an insertion point over in our view controller that says insert an outlet or outlet connection. If I let go of the mouse right here, we're going to get a little popover that asks me what I want to create. In this case, we want to create an outlet. What is an outlet? Well, in an Objective-C project, an outlet is sort of like a property that represents this label from code in our view controller. So that's going to give us, when we go back to our C-sharp project, a property strongly typed to be a UI label uh, with whatever name we give it. In this case, we're going to name it hello label. I'm going to follow uh, C sharp naming conventions for properties and start off with capitals. If you've done any Objective-C programming, this typically would be a lowercase first camel casing situation. But knowing that we're only temporarily using Objective-C to generate C sharp, I'm going to name my properties the way I want to see them in my C sharp project. Now we have two options for the button. When I control drag over to the code, I'm going to get the option to create either an outlet or an action. I'm going to create both 
and show you what these can be used for. Um, we're going to name this hello button for the outlet. And what that's going to give me access to is the actual button object later. We can hook up events on that button. We can change the text of the button. We can change the background color. Uh, so basically, it's just going to give us access directly to the button object as a property. But we also have this option to create an action. Now the action is going to give us, I'm going to name it say hello. What that's going to give us is the ability to directly hook up to an event. Uh, there's a ton of these events on the button that we can handle. The one that we want is touch up inside. And touch up inside means that a finger was detected on the button. Uh, and the finger was released while still within the button. Why is that important? Well, if I were to put, place my finger on the button and the developer had hooked up touch down um, on the button, as soon as they tapped on it, the event would fire. And that's not what we really want on these applications. We, we want to have the ability to cancel. So if I release my finger outside of the bounds of the button, I don't want this event to fire. So it's only going to fire if my finger stayed within the button and was released. So that's the event that we're going to handle for tap, basically. And I've named this say hello. And that's going to create an action. Now don't worry about the specifics of this syntax over here. As soon as we save this file and our interface file and hop back over to Xamarin Studio, all of our changes are going to get detected. Now what does that actually mean for us? Well. I've been a little sneaky and not shown you that there's one more file over in our project that's really important, and that is our view controllers designer.cs file. If we crack that open now and take a look, right? Ah, well, we have these outlet objects that got created, and we have an action now. And you'll notice that this is a partial class, which means that this is also our view controller. So any properties that have been auto-generated here in this designer.cs file, they're going to be available over in our uh, view controller class. So we now have access to the label and the button, and we have a partial method called say hello that we can implement uh, for when the user taps on the button. Let's go ahead and hook some of that stuff up. Now there's two ways to deal with uh, the button. So in this example, we've created an action, but let's say we didn't create the action. Let's say we only created the outlet. Well, one way we could do this is to grab our hello button. Notice we've got our IntelliSense working here. If we do hello button uh, dot touch up inside, uh, we can just hook this event up right here. So plus equals, uh, we'll do sender and E and drop down inside of the event handler and what would we be wanting to do? Well we want to set the text of hello label to something like um, hello IG webinar right so this is the event handling approach um, for the button so when the button is tapped uh, the hello label text will be set um, and that's that's one way to do this. But we've created uh, the method approach, the action method approach. So let's just take this code out of here and come down here and actually implement the partial. Uh, and notice that as soon as I type partial, it's going to pull in the say hello method uh, that it that uh, Xamarin Studio knows about from our partial class. Tab into that and we have the ability to edit this directly. And what are we going to want to do? Well, exactly what we did before. We're going to set the hello label text to hello IG webinar. At this point, we should have a fully functioning application. So we save everything and run it. Uh, this is going to build again and launch our simulator. And this time, as I mentioned, if I tap down on the button, and release outside of the button, nothing happens. If I tap down on the button and release inside of the button, our code runs and we get hello IG webinar. Uh, what if you wanted to see that in action? Well, you've got this debugger here. You can set breakpoints 
just like you would in Visual Studio. If we uh, go ahead again and tap and release, notice our breakpoint gets hit. We get a call stack to this point. We have an immediate window where we can check things like hello label, see what's going on with that, what's the text set to. Uh, you have local variables that you can drill into and see what their values are. Um, if you're in code, you can do things like add watch statements and, and these sorts of things. You can do an expression evaluator. All the things that you'd be used to um, from Visual Studio in terms of a debugger, uh, they're all available here inside of Xamarin Studio. It should be very familiar to you. Um, and at this point, like I said, we have a fully functioning Hello World application. And uh, you'll be able to download uh, this solution uh, from the blog post that accompanies this uh, video. And uh, so now let's check out uh, some other applications just to see a little bit more of what you can build in a more complex fashion. So I've gone ahead and closed our solution. We're back at the root level of Xamarin Studio. I want to take a look at this employee directory pre-built application that uh, Xamarin has put together as a sample. This does a lot of interesting things. It's got the hierarchical navigation, so you can see what it's like to navigate from screen to screen. Uh, they're doing some complex things like uh, LDAP authentication. We're not really gonna dig into that at all. Uh, but there's also Gravatar support and search, which are pretty cool, so we'll take a look at those. I'm gonna go ahead and open this solution. I've already downloaded it. Uh, you can click that Download Solution button and it'll take you off to Xamarin's site where you can download it and pull it right into Xamarin Studio. When you get this solution, there will also be an Android project in here. I've removed it temporarily from my solution because I don't have the latest version of Android installed right now and it's somewhat outside the scope of this webinar to begin with. I may have a future webinar that covers building cross-platform mobile applications uh, where we will take a look at Android. Uh, but for the purposes of, of this webinar, uh, I've removed it from the solution. What's neat here though is we do have a project that can be used across our different uh, projects. So there's some services here uh, in C-Sharp that are going to be uh, directly usable inside of our iOS project. Uh, so that's one way to sort of structure this so that you can build cross-platform. Uh, this project is using uh, MVVM, so Model View View Model. Uh, I mentioned MVC before. It's not a requirement for you to use strict MVC. There are projects that will help you build MVVM cross-platform. Uh, that project's called MVVM Cross, it's something to look at. Uh, that's going to give you a lot of support for building model view view model projects across iOS, Android, and Windows Phone. Um, I'm not going to dig in too much to the details uh, of that stuff. What I do want to look at real quick is what this application looks like when it runs. Um, so we get a nice login box, the username and password, nicely centered. Um, we have this help button that when we tap it pops up a dialogue that tells us what we can do. So these are different things that they're showing you how to do uh, in this pre-built application. So we tap in here, we can enter in whatever we want. I'll do Brent, Brent and hit login. Showing you how to do progress indicator and then logging us into the application. You'll notice that all these all these fine folks that we're seeing here uh, in, in this application all have uh, pictures. It, to hap actually happens to be their Gravatar, so their globally recognized avatar out from Gravatar.com. That's getting pulled in with some code um, that you can take a look at in this solution. If we tap on one of these fine folks like uh, Miguel Diacaza here, uh, it's going to navigate us over to uh, details uh, about, about the person. So we can see he's the CTO, works in developers, um, and we got phone numbers and emails so we can see what would happen if we tap that this is gonna launch his Twitter page uh, pretty neat stuff that they're showing you how to do here um, so let's take a look at how this stuff's sort of built up if we I just want to take a look at one of these screens just to show you an example of, of how these things are, are, are built so what they're doing in this application is building their UI uh, directly uh, from from code so 
uh, what you can see here is they're, they're actually specifying all the things that Interface Builder would do for you when you create your UI. They're actually showing you here how to do it in code. All the different things that you would need to set up um, from code to build your UI. So that's something to take a look at uh, if you're if you're wanting to get familiar with um, how you build the user interface without using Xcode. And again, if you're if you're in Visual Studio and you don't want to build your UI on the Mac, you're going to have to do it from code. So it would be good to take a look at uh, how this stuff is built. One thing we can take a look at too, I wanted to show you that they're actually hooking up the event for that button. As I showed you earlier, um, they're hooking up that touch up inside and calling a login method. And that login method down here uh, just basically checks to see if you've entered some text, if you've entered a password, and if it has, uh, it just sets on the login view model the username and password and then calls this login async uh, which is just going to log you in it's what showed the progress and then when it's done uh, continues with this code dismisses the view controller and takes us uh, over to the other uh, the person view controller which is a little more complex uh, when you when you study this code you're going to see that this is a table view controller so that's on iOS that's our our list basically the, the people that were being shown there and uh, so what that's you know what that's showing us is how to sort of get at that and in fact uh, when you dig into this code you're gonna wanna learn a little bit about how uh, table view controllers are constructed uh, they tend to use what's called a delegate and a data source and that's what's going to populate the the rows and sections um, so I, this is a fantastic example to take a look at to see a variety of different application constructs that you can uh, use in your iOS apps and uh, it's, it's well constructed so I would take a look at this example uh, first uh, when you're trying to dig into the Xamarin.iOS stuff. So one last project I want to look at is a sample that I built for our Nucleus chart. Uh, and this is a, a native uh, charting component for iOS that we have monotouch bindings for. I'm going to go ahead and run the project just so you can see what we're working with. Um, I wrote a, a relatively lengthy blog post that uh, shows how to build this thing uh, in monotouch, but I wanted to just kind of show it off here again for those of you who might not have seen it. So what I've got here is a, an area chart, and when we tap the refresh button, we're regenerating points uh, between 5 and 45 and assigning them to the chart. And you'll notice that over a second, the chart will animate to the new points every time we hit the refresh button. Let's take a look at how that's built uh, using uh, Xamarin.iOS. As I mentioned, we have bindings uh, directly to our Objective-C iOS controls, which is going to allow you to use the chart inside of your Xamarin.iOS projects. Uh, let's take a quick look just at the interface builder file uh, to see kind of sort of what I hooked up here. The only thing that I added uh, in this view controller uh, for our chart uh, is I set the background color to, to black just to get some styling. Here I've added a navigation bar so that's what's going to give you your, your title bar up at the top so one hint in this library, you can search here. So if I type in navigation, uh, here's that navigation bar object. So that's what I've created here. Uh, I double clicked it to change the title. And then this refresh button is actually what's called a bar button item. So if we do bar button, we get bar button item. And then I just dragged that to this point. And, and when you drag these buttons up here, you'll get little drop points where it expects to put them on the platform. So if I were to drop one here, it would give me a button over on the left. What's interesting about the buttons, these bar button items, is they have this uh, identifier that you can set. And what these identifiers are, are basically the, uh, the standard buttons that you could expect in uh, your iOS applications. So if I set this to add, right, it's going to give us the 
canonical plus. If I do compose, it's going to make it look like I'm composing a message or reply. Right? You get the point. Basically, these are uh, the, the things that we would expect to have in an iOS application. What I want is refresh because we're actually going to refresh the data points. So it's convenient. It gives me something that's going to be familiar to an iOS user. And uh, that, that's really great for this. If we take a look at the assistant editor again, as we did before, we can see that I've hooked up a few uh, points. We've got the refresh bar button item that I want to hook up in my code. And we've got the uh, navigation bar, uh, just in case I wanted to set the text or something to that effect uh, dynamically from code. I've created an outlet just so it's available uh, over in our code. So if we hop back over to Xamarin Studio, uh, I just wanted to show you that you don't have to, to do the whole UI in Interface Builder. All I wanted to do there was create a nice navigation bar and, and get the uh, ease of setup that I get from the Interface Builder uh, itself. So setting the identifier to get that refresh button. That's something I could do from code, but it's much easier to do really quickly in Interface Builder. The chart, though, uh, does not have Interface Builder support. You need to build that from code. So let's take just a quick look at this code. Uh, as I mentioned, if you want to get a full deep dive on how to build this, there is a blog post out there that I will link to from the webinar follow-up. Uh, but what we're basically going to do is create a property for our chart, a property for an NS object array of data that we'll call data. Um, we need to use NS object because that's what the chart is going to expect. Uh, so if you're going to use custom data objects in your nucleus chart, uh, make sure to derive your objects from NS object. Um, and that's, that's a pattern that you'll see uh, duplicated a lot in Xamarin.ios. Uh, a lot of projects will require you to have uh, your subclass, uh, your data object subclass from NS object. Um, we're going to use a category series uh, data source helper, which is going to make it easy for us to set up the data points for our chart. Uh, we're going to keep a running total of the, the total items, and we're going to use a random number generator. Uh, and here we can set up our objects in the constructor. So we're going to have 100 data points. Uh, we're going to use our leet number generator, uh, a category series data source helper, and then we're going to call this populate data uh, method that's going to load up some data points. We can take a brief look at what populate data looks like. Uh, it's not super interesting. Uh, it just loops through and creates a bunch of random data points between uh, 45 and 5 uh, and then sets them to uh, our, uh, populates our data array with a, a number representation of that value and then we update the uh, data source values with that array. So nothing super fun here to look at, we're just generating data points. What is interesting to look at is our view did load method. In our view did load method, we're actually creating our UI. So I'm going to create a new chart view. I'm setting up the, the bounds. So that's the rectangle on screen that the chart's going to take up. Uh, these values are based on wanting to be a certain distance from the top left, right, and bottom, um, or the, the top and left in this case, and a height and width. Um, so those, those data points are, are things that you can, you can get from using the interface builder. So we're going to specify how far over from the left do we want this thing. So I've, I've given it uh, 20. Uh, so that's going to be 20 in from the left. And the, the Y value of 64 is 64 pixels down from the top. That's to clear uh, the navigation bar and provide a little bit of padding. And then we've got the width and height that we specified. Um, you can play around with these values, just get it to look right uh, for your application. Auto resizing mask, we're setting up flexible height and width. What that's going to give us is when we rotate the phone, uh, it's going to automatically relay itself out um, in the height and width direction. Uh, the chart's background color is going to be black. We're also going to use the dark theme in a moment um, just to set up basically the theme for the chart. And then we're going to add the chart uh, to the view controller's view. I call populate data, which is going to uh, repopulate everything into the chart. Uh, and then we're going to set up the chart. So we create this series type. Uh, we're going to do 
uh, an area series as I mentioned we're gonna name it area series and we're gonna give our X and Y axis a name and then we just create the the series on the chart so we add the the series we call add series which will add an area series with all of the properties that we set up uh, we're gonna have no labels visible uh, y-axis minimum maximum of 0 to 45 the transition duration that's what's gonna uh, use our motion framework to animate the points when we create new data points uh, and as I mentioned that's over one second uh, and then we set the theme to dark the refresh button basically duplicates the code of uh, populating the data uh, so that's that's about it that's really all it is and the, the only thing that we don't really duplicate is we're actually replacing the item in the chart uh, so that's why I'm not calling populate data directly here um, but that's about it so we've got an event handler on our refresh button we could have used an action there uh, that's a preference point whether you want to use events on the outlet or if you want to use an action method completely up to you but like I mentioned there is a blog post that goes through building this in detail talks about uh, what you're doing there uh, in detail out on the Infragistics blog uh, so take a look at that you can download the solution from there so that's going to do it for our code demos. Uh, let's hop back over to the slides for a moment, and then you'll be on your way. So I mentioned uh, Nucleus. Like I said, this is our uh, Infragistics iOS controls. They're native controls uh, out at infragistics.com slash product slash iOS. We've got a grid, and we've got a chart uh, in this initial release. Uh, the grid is great. Uh, you can use it as a standard data grid or you can use it for, for more uh, of a, a layout grid. Uh, and the chart has a ton of different series and everything's completely customizable. So I really want you to check that out. As I mentioned, uh, if you're building Xamarin.iOS applications, we ship bindings that are compatible with, with Nucleus, uh, with Xamarin iOS. So it's really something great to check out to, to bring some data visualization into your iOS applications. If you want to reach me, uh, either to follow up based on uh, what we've been talking about here, if you've got questions, uh, whatever the case may be, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, either email me, uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, I'll, I'll be able to respond to you very quickly there. Um, and hit my website and my blog uh, for more details on this stuff. Uh, this webinar and other webinars will be posted there as well as tutorials such as that uh, Nucleus chart example. Uh, these are great resources for learning these products um, and I, I really would like for you to check those out. One last little bit, uh, if you're doing Windows 8 development, uh, I wrote a book called Designing for Windows 8 that's going to help you get started uh, with your application design. It's a very short primer on uh, the fundamentals of really good design for Windows Store applications. It's going to walk you through uh, the basics and talk through some uh, design strategies and then help you just get started. Uh, so please feel free to check that out. Um, it is shipping now, so um, I hope you'll check that out. Uh, but thank you for attending this webinar. Uh, it's been great, and I uh, hope to hear from you guys soon.